Hey guys, Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. Um, I want to share with you one of the most well-known verses in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If, if someone was to ask you what God's mission statement was, how would you respond? I think most of us would go to Moses 139, which says, For behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. So God's work and glory is to make sure that we have immortality, which is that free gift that comes through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Again, all of us are going to receive that immortality and eternal life. And eternal life is life with God. It is life like God. And so that is his work, his glory. That is what he does. It is what brings him joy. It is all about what he does. And that's awesome. God wants that for us. But what is our work in all of this process? Well, you go to section 11 of the Doctrine and Covenants, remembering that this is to the wonderful Hiram Smith. I read some quotes yesterday about how awesome he is and how he was looked at by others. So you got to start, I think, with verse number 19. And 19 starts off and it says, Yea, cleave unto me with all your heart. Cleave means to strongly adhere to, to, to bond, to become emotionally attached to, to become involved with. So cleave unto me with all your heart. And uh, you go down to verse number 20 and it says, For behold, this is your work. Okay, God just told us what his work is in Moses 1. For behold, this is your work to keep my commandments with all your might, mind, and strength. Um, as I'm reading that, that doesn't seem like a fair trade at all. Here's, here's God. I'm going to give you all that I have. The kingdom is yours. What do you have to do? Keep my commandments. Okay, now you keep them with all of your heart. You cleave unto him with all your heart in that previous verse the might, mind, and strength. We hear that all the time. Those four things, the heart, might, mind, and strength. And it's interesting, your heart is where you feel. Your might, that's your strength, your 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 abilities. Your mind, that's, he, you want, to, he wants you to follow him in your thoughts as well. And your strength, just your enduring to the end there. There's a lot of places we can go with this. So I want to take you kind of to a weird place. I want to take you to one of my favorite books in the Old Testament. Um, the, the book is Leviticus. Now, you're probably looking like, really? Leviticus? Yeah, it's it's a cool book. I really, I, I really love what's in Leviticus, especially if you are working with Levitical priests and understanding that Levitical priests, the Doctrine and Covenants actually calls the Aaronic priesthood the Levitical priesthood. So this Leviticus is a perfect book for teenage boys to be able to understand how to fulfill their priestly duties. So right in Leviticus chapter 1, it starts off in talking about what the priest duties are with regards to sacrifice. Now, I want to show you something here and keep in mind the idea of heart, might, mind, and strength. You go to verses 8 and 9 of Leviticus chapter 1 that says, the priests, Aaron's sons, again, these Aaronic priesthood holders, shall lay the parts. This is after the animal has been uh, killed, that, that lamb that is that perfect lamb, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. You know, it talks about the inwards, right? Those those inner organs that are in you, that heart right there. Your mind, it talks about the head. You put that head right there on the altar as well. It talks about the might that you have. Honestly, one of the things that gives you might is fat. It's it's an energy, right? It gives you that. Uh, and then the other one is um, the legs. And the legs provide for you strength. So that heart, might, mind, and strength, you put it all together. What do you do? You burn it on the altar, which a lot of times you think about that. It's like, oh, it's crazy. You, you burn all this stuff. Well, Honestly, and I don't want to, to to devalue what they were doing back in the Old Testament, but honestly, if you've ever been to a barbecue joint, okay, you go down south or you go wherever, back wherever you decide to go where you love your barbecue, you walk in and you smell, oh my word, that smells wonderful. What they have done is they have seasoned parts of an animal with salt. The, the book of Leviticus talks all about using salt in those sacrifices. And what happens? It sends a sweet savor to the Lord. You walk into there and it's like, oh, this smells so good, this barbecue place. Honestly, 
it's similar. You send that sweet savor, that good savor up to God. And that's your way of showing, I am willing to offer you all. I am willing to offer my heart, my mind, my strength, and my mind. That's what I do. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you everything. What do I ask in return? You keep the commandments with that heart. You cleave unto me with all your heart, that mind, your might, and your strength. So I love that little idea right there that's found. Um, your work is to keep the commandments of God with all your heart, might, mind, and strength. Now, section 11 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 21. Let me finish with this thought. I love this. It says, seek not to declare my word, but first seek to obtain my word. Then shall your tongue be loosed. Then, if you desire, you shall have my spirit and my word, yea, the power of God unto the convincing of men. You know, years ago I heard a quote, and, and I think it was more of a self-care type of quote, but I think it applies here to this particular verse. It says, you cannot pour from an empty cup to take care of yourself. And I get that. That's an important thing in many different ways. But I think it's also an important thing when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So you've got to be able to have that word in you. So seek not to declare my word. But first seek to obtain my word, and then shall your tongue be loosed. Then you will have my spirit under the convincing, the footnote says, the conversion of men. And so it's important to, for us to be able to work on our personal scripture study, getting that spiritual reservoir, if you will, filled up so that when the time is necessary and when the time is right, we can share that gospel with others. Here's Hiram Smith, who's super excited to share the gospel. And the Lord's like, Hiram, I love your excitement. I love that. I want you to obtain my word before you declare it. And Hiram was very willing to do it, became a very effective servant right next to his brother Joseph. So anyway, I hope uh, that helps you out. I hope sections 10 and 11 have come alive for you this week as we've talked about it. Uh, hey, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We really appreciate all that you do to help us share these messages with others. Godspeed and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.